Ah, uh, good afternoon everyone. Paul Daniels here. Another What I Fix Daily. And today we've got this Busted 5S. It's actually my third one for today. And... Oh, what am I saying? It's six. iPhone 6. Bloody hell. You hear that? My brain's completely fried. Oh well. So, this should just be a screen job. In theory. It's pretty bust up there. And normally I wouldn't bother doing these on... Uh, it looks like I've worked on this one before. That's good. Normally I don't bother doing these because, you know, they're pretty standard, rudimentary, nothing fancy, no one really cares. But today has been such a god-awful crappy day for jobs that I thought, well... Let's record this one and just see how bad we can get. Now let's hopefully there won't be any badness, but uh, if there is, we'll catch it. I'm just going to mark that one. And mark that one. Now yeah, you're probably wondering why do I mark those? Well, two reasons. One, like I said, it's a god awful crappy day and therefore I don't want things to go wrong because as most of you will know these iPhone 6's and the 5S's and whatnot can be unwilling victims of long screw damage. Now I've done plenty of these that I you know, when I set it out on my little magnetic board here that uh, I shouldn't run into any troubles but end of the week feeling tired, feeling cranky, and various other emotions, something could go wrong. And I certainly don't want it to be a long screw damage, because if I do a long screw damage, I definitely do not have the tools, inclination, or anything to that effect to fix it. I would have to pack it up and send it off to somewhere that does do that. And to add insult to injury, they will probably laugh. Actually, that's not really a problem, I don't mind. I get plenty of people laughing at what I do, or criticising what I do, because that's what happens. Yeah. Believe me, when you do these things on uh, live, well, just in videos and whatnot, it's amazing how many mistakes you make. It's like you lose 20 IQ points or something. It just happens. I mean, you look back over the videos later and you go, Oh my god, why did I do that? What was wrong with me? Stop me. Don't do another video. But then, I don't know, some sort of hormones or idiocracy takes over and you do it again. And I seem to be doing that a lot, because I'm fast approaching 100 videos. Right. This one's been knocked around quite a lot. Now, a fair majority of those screws actually came out, or were already rattled loose. So this one's gone for a nice ride down the stairs or something. Oh, for God's sake, come on. There we go. Alright. Oh great. Uh, come on. I have to lean over backwards to get my replacement uh, napkins. Oh, for God's sake. Now this is my last black iPhone 6 display in stock at the moment. So fingers crossed it actually works. The previous one I did today turned out to be a glorious pink screen. Now for those of you who repair these things you'll know that the 
pink screen is what you get with the um, what do you call it? refurbished OEM displays after they've been through the cycles a few too many times. I don't know exactly what the uh, mechanical or chemical mod uh, changes in the screens that caused it to go pink, but it definitely shows up. So unfortunately the previous job I just had, I basically had said to him, you know, I'm sorry it's pink, now I can either give you a discount, or you can come back next week when my stock's arrived, and we can put a new one in. Now normally I prefer people to go for the discount, because when they go for the discount it means I don't have to send it back and it also means I don't have to depend on them not smashing that screen while they're uh, while they're waiting for the new ones to come in because obviously if the screen gets smashed in the due time uh, I can't get a warranty job on the pink one and then it leads to all sorts of weird and complicated emotions where the people go, well, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the proper screen in the first place, so I shouldn't have to pay for another one because I smashed this one. It's like, yeah, you really do. But uh, at this point, I'm a little bit too weak-willed, and I can guarantee you I would probably just sort of eat the loss. And because I'm eating the loss too much on too many of these things in life, because everyone knows that a great majority of parts tend to be really shitty lately, uh you go broke and you start getting frustrated and angry and yelling at people ok I don't really yell at people uh, but you want to and it gets you down breaks you down makes you just want to table flip shut the door, slam the door behind you and go become a greengrocer or something I don't know I'm sure they have their problems too actually you probably get batches of lettuce that have been chowed out by grubs and stuff yeah. so there's <coughs> each industry has its issues ah oh, jeez that's just coming out on its own these things here I find a lot of people who do screen replacements forget to take that off and I often when I do my screen replacement afterwards I peel them yeah I can see them on their broken old screens Makes me wonder why the no, people not notice the audio quality change or something. Because that covers up the microphone that's up there, which I believe is used for noise cancellation or something like that. Anyway, it does make me wonder about the people fitting these things. I do not notice. And now would be a perfect time in this video for me to forget to do something and everyone go, did you not notice? How could you not notice that? Come on, come on, that's it. So I just have to wiggle that back and forth so it nests in. After you've done a few of them, you really get a feel for when it's nested in so that those sensors are in the right positions. Come on. Yeah. What's going on there? The other thing I often love is when those uh, captive nuts in the embedded in the plastic either have a dud thread or no thread, or they're filled up with plastic. It's like another five, ten minutes wasted stuffing around for something you really shouldn't have had to have done in the first place if the supplier was good. Alright, we're going to test this straight up before I lock everything down because I'm feeling that paranoid. Come on, come on. Ah, damn it. So yes. What's the bit has no charge? No bit charge. Okay. Do we have a pink screen? That's what we want to know. Are you going to be pink? 
if it's pink, I'm just going to scream. So what's the point of paying extra for these higher quality units, only to find that they're perfectly shitty quality? If I wanted to go shitty quality, I could save about 20 bucks on each screen and then match the prices and profit margins of the other mob down the street. Come on, boot! You better boot. Do not tell me you're going to get stuck in... Ah, thank god. Well, it's definitely got no pink on it, so I'm happy. Thank flip for that. Okay. But we're not out of the woods yet. Gotta make sure it sits down properly. And all the other business. So, yeah. yeah, that's interesting. <laughs> it's, uh, this side bends down, so let's say we call that a um, convex bend. And this one bends up, so concave. Marvellous. So I'll have a nice twist in that. Fortunately, it seems to be subtle enough that I can get away with just letting the plastic frame absorb the difference. I do have my uh, cat. Where the hell is it? Ah! I do have my very professional iPhone chassis straightening device, but uh, we're not going to be using that today. There's sort of a, a minimum bend you want to see on a chassis before you put it into that contraption, because otherwise more often than not you just bounce back and forth between it being too much one way or too much the other way. It's very tricky to get a perfect flat outcome and of course the more you bend it the more the metal itself deforms, becomes brittle, stretches yeah. generally not good okay let me talk that right down there you go, no I did not really do that just kidding I do get some phones in where they have done something pretty bloody close to that. You're like, sweet mother of God, why? Why? It's not a flippin' truck. <laughs> okay. When was this last done? 2016. So, it was done one year ago. Yeah. I don't put the date codes in them anymore. Instead, what I do is I get the IMI code off the back and it just gets registered as a job in the database. And so, next time it comes in, I can just check and get a full rundown on what I've done to it in the past. Boop. Come on now. Come on up. Come on. My paranoia tells me that that looks pink, but I think it's actually caused by the radiosity. Over here I've got uh, a red laptop, and it's just picking up and giving it a bit of a pinkish look. I should really charge this as well, just to test. Um, I got my... finally got my new loom here. This isn't for charging, obviously. This is for if your battery's dead or whatever, and you're testing your boards, and plug these in. So, uh, that's going to come in use later. I'll probably use it on that iPhone 4 I worked on the other night, just to check its current loads. Alright, and this is my other charger board. The um, power board loom does come with a little charger board, but I prefer using this one. You can get these pretty much anywhere on eBay. Okay, that one came up saying hello. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Well, I hope that's what the person's expecting. I couldn't check it before because the screen was just too messed up. 
I always get paranoid when I see that uh, up in factory reformatted hello type thing. Yeah, don't need that happening. Alright, that's it for today. I've whinged enough and we've fixed up an iPhone 6, so it looks like I'm going to actually have a bit of success there. And I think I'll get back to uh, doing some programming again later tonight. Got some more features to add into Open Board View. Yeah, they're not going to be easy ones. Some of them require a bit of thinking. We'll see how we go. Might produce another hour long put me to sleep type video. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys next time.